Okay, guys, so welcome back. This is part two with Todd. Uh, we've already talked about one fish. There's a playlist with this whole set of videos in it uh, once they're all posted. So you talked to us just a minute ago, which everybody else is going to see us a couple of days ago, about a fish that y'all tracked that traveled, basically a two-pounder that traveled all of housing, all the way out into the Indian Mound. So well, uh, give us some other data on some other fish, if you would, Todd. Yeah, yeah. Now, this fish, I mean, that, that last fish we talked about, it was just a two-pound fish. And, you know, I think a lot of us kind of feel that the smaller a fish is, maybe the more mobile it is, maybe the more shad-related it is and what have you. Now, this fish was a six-pound fish. And this fish, for whatever reason, had a super strong affinity for two distinct areas within housing that were five miles apart. We, we originally tagged this fish in the back of housing in June. Uh, two weeks later, uh, the fish is still there. But then, again, the following tracking event, two weeks after that, that fish had moved five miles out to the south mouth of housing on the shoreline out there. Todd, excuse me again for interrupting you. Sure. So for our, our friends who are watching this who are not Texans and not familiar with Toledo, so you track that fish, you found that fish in June. When typically do the fish at Toledo been spawned? You know, they're going to spawn depending on the weather at the earliest, typically, you know, mid-February to clear through, heck, probably 1st of May during that. Really? Period. So there's that big a spawn window at Toledo Bend? Weather dependent, you know, in a given specific year, maybe not. But, you know, I know you, you've done it like I have. I mean, I fished for bedding fish in late January in this country. Yep, yep. I'm always, to me, Toledo been so far ahead of Rayburn, typically speaking, and I don't know why, but that's something I've observed as well. Yeah, and we, we can talk about this later, but since you brought it up, you know, we had evidence that several of our fish, you know, didn't move into the banks to spawn until till mid to late April. During, okay. During, yeah, so, but yeah, this, this six pound fish, you know, boom, and it was in the back, but then when it decided to move, uh, best we can tell over that two week period, it moved straight out there five miles out to that South Bank area at the, at the mouth of uh, housing. And that fish stayed there without exception. We found it every two weeks. It stayed there from July through December and only moved in a small quarter mile area close to the shoreline. Close to the shoreline. Yeah, it, it, the, this bank it was on, it's got a really steep drop. And I think that kind of makes sense to us, you know, the, 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 these bigger fish, you know, that, that fish didn't have to move much to be in 25 feet versus three feet. It stayed on a really hard break, just over a real small quarter mile area. I mean, it's literally a do nothing stretch of shoreline. You know, and I've been around here, again, 22 years, fished the Toledo Bend a ton, done a ton of angler creel surveys. Never have I seen a boat fishing right here in you and I wouldn't even really ever dream of stopping there. It's just not anything unique, significant, nothing that stands out. But by God, it was important to that fish. That's crazy. July through December, it stayed right there. Then we get to January. What did it do? It went right back to that same area, clearing the back of housing five miles away. Again, hey, in Todd, did you? So I know you're only tracking every two weeks. Yeah. Would you see it? halfway back two weeks two weeks later part of the way back or does it just go it typically just goes now we don't know what they do you know in that two-week period when we're not over there but only one time did we get a hit on that fish in between these areas and we highly suspect we just caught it in route right right we don't know if it may if it makes that trip in a day or two or or a week but it makes that trip in a two-week interval so there in january it's back in the back it's you know, again, I'm thinking, well, that fish is, you know, hey, January came. It just kind of knew it's getting closer to spawn, so here we go. Well, it stayed back there through February, but then surprisingly, the 1st of March, what did it do? Right back out five miles away to that quarter-mile hard drop shoreline area. This is so counter to everything I've ever believed about bass fishing. Then mid-April, I mean, it doesn't stop yet. Mid-April, what did it do? five miles back to the back, <laughs> presumably then to spawn, because when it was back there through February, it was just still too cold. And, and we did get a heavy rain or two, and the lake got real muddy back there like it typically does. So I think the muddy water moved it out. But, uh, but yeah, and then it stayed back there through May in the back, and then our battery expired. 
but strong affinity for either the back or out of the mouth and only found it one time in a year in between those areas. Were you able Five miles to, apart? This is a six pound fish. That, that, that just boggles my mind. Were you able to observe that fish while she was spawning? No. Okay. So that's interesting. So that you said something there that makes sense to me. She might've pushed back there. And again, we're making assumptions here or guesses. She might've pushed back there to go ahead and spawn, but muddy water pushed her back out because she still got to eat. Right. Right. But yeah, out was five miles out and then five miles back. You know, it, 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 it certainly appears that, that, that a certain percent of bass, you know, they just, for whatever reason, home in or get comfortable in a small little home area. And it doesn't matter to that particular individual fish if it has to swim five or six miles. That's just where it wants to be. It doesn't have to be or need to be there. It just apparently wants to be. I mean, right, I so can't find any other explanation. So great point there. So again, for the guys that aren't familiar with Toledo Bend, and, and correct me if you believe differently. So if that fish is in the back of housing and that water muddied up, she could move a mile or a mile and a half to the jack to the to the uh, Jack's area back there and not be in muddy water. Absolutely. So yes. to the back of Toledo will muddy, but it seems generally not to get muddy very far out. So that fish didn't just move away from muddy water. It sounds like she moved to something she was comfortable with her other home. So basically she was a snowbird. Yeah. And you know, I, I made specific notes on this fish. It was so peculiar, right? I mean, it, the water was muddy for several weeks while that fish stayed back there. So exactly why, you know, first of March, when the spawns right around the corner, she decided to move five miles back out and then have to make five miles back. Who knows? But we know she did. Wow. Now, the, the, this next fish, it, it was a two and a half pound fish. And, and this was one of the fish that, it was only in housing to spawn. I'm this sorry, a, I'm a, I, I keep interrupting you, but questions keep popping in my head. Sure, sure. Can we safely assume in Texas a six pound fish is a female? 95 plus percent, let's okay. say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this two and a half pound fish, exclusively main river, extreme main lake fish, other than the spawn inside of housing. When we tagged it in June, it was one of the fish we tagged from deep water. You know, we, 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 we fished to collect some fish from deep water. We, we caught it, tagged it in June, out there off the main housing bayou, just straight north of Finn and Feather Marina. Uh, the, the two in the very next two week tracking event, that fish, we had a hard time finding it. It was out there on that community hole cha river channel swing at the boat lane off community hole flats is where it went. It stayed in that general vicinity over a mile and a half stretch around the river right there the entire rest of the summer, fall, and winter. I mean, it, it moved within a mile and a half area, but it never left that main river area. And then it waited until April to make a move to spawn. And it went right into a spawning cove just north of where we caught it in June, just right north of Finn and Feather. One of those Went to the closest bank it could get to. Yes. And, and unfortunately, it was in there spawning, and that fish was caught and harvested by an angler. That was one of the – I think that was the only fish that we truly had tagged that a fish harvested it anyway. Okay. But, yeah, he, 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 he harvested it when it was up there on the banks. So that fish had no affinity for house. And what's – we're getting back to the uh, lifespan of our batteries, right? It would have been so interesting to see if these behaviors were, were repeatable. Did that fish or the six pound fish do the same exact thing over the next year? And unfortunately, our, our battery life just isn't going to give us that insight. I mean, my gut tells me that they would have. Mine too. We're just not going to have the data. Now, uh, this next fish is a three and a half pound fish. They didn't move a whole lot, but it made several movements again some strong affinities for a couple select areas around the spawn uh, when we tagged it we tagged it around ashmore branch uh, and it stayed within a third of a mile area around there uh, we collected it from deep water out there in that gut in front of ashmore and it stayed there from june through february without exception over nine months it just roamed over about a third of a mile area right there 
March 1st, spawn is spawning time. It moves a mile and a quarter to the very, very back of Bull Creek. Now, two weeks later, there was, there was no weird weather events, no water color change, no heavy rain. For some reason, two weeks later, that fish was right back out a mile and a quarter away at the mouth of Ashbourne deep water. And what Stayed month was there. that? Pardon? What month was that? That was uh, March 1st, it went to the back of Bull Creek, and then March 15th, it had left and went out to Ashmore in deep water again. So it spawned. And stayed there for a month. Mid-April comes, and, and I was thinking that, well, the fish, maybe it may have been a female, just pulled in there, and in two weeks, it had done its business, was done, and moved out. Well, mid-April, what did it do? It went right back to the exact button bush that it was in before, one and a quarter miles away. I mean, the exact bush it was in. Wow. And it stayed in the back of, of, of Bull Creek until uh, mid-May, and then it went right back out to, to Ashmore until the battery ran out. All right, a little off topic, but still on topic. Bass will spawn on more than one nest, correct? Yes, research has shown that, that female bass, I mean, they, they don't go and, and dump their eggs all in one uh, shot. I mean, they'll, they'll do it two, three, or four times over a period of, let's say, you know, a few days to maybe a week and a half or so in different Any, nests. Yeah, different males. yeah and that's all survivability, right? You, in case somebody catches that male or that male dies, she wants to have yeah, I think that's a really good conclusion, and it just kind of speaks to also ensuring genetic diversity, you know, with spawning with multiple males. Yeah, right. I, th I think it just makes some good common sense. Absolutely. Any chance that fish was a female that spawned twice? Could be, uh, but, you know, it moved a mile and a quarter from, from one place to the other. Again, it just had a strong, you know, affinity for, for that area at Ashmore. Yeah, a mile and a quarter away. It's not a tremendous distance, but, you know, when you're out there on the lake, as you well know, I mean, there's plenty of structure, cover, places that fish can, can make a home. And uh, he just preferred to be right there in that little area in front of Ashmore. Wow. Okay. Well, we had another fish, and this was a smaller fish, a two-pound fish. <clears throat> For whatever reason, I mean, it has stayed within housing you know, from, from May, June, July, clear through January, but made a huge, in fact, it's the largest single two-week move that, that we've had over the course of the whole two years. We'd have never found it, but an angler caught the fish and was kind enough to report it. This fish was another Ashmore branch fish out there in, 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 in deeper water. Uh, stayed there June through December, but in, in January, in, in, in our interval between tracking days then was 11 days. So I know in, ele in an 11 day period, it moved from that area at Ashmore, seven miles as the crow flies down to Hickory Ridge of all places, south of Six Mile. It was caught by an angler under a boat dock there. We would have never ever found that fish because we, I just would stop tracking at the mouth of Six Mile. You know, I wouldn't go any further for, for the sake of time and just needle in a haystack of, you know, needle and haystack uh, stack effect after that. But. Well, and as you said, that's seven miles of crow flies. That's maybe 10 miles of swimming. Well, right. And we don't know over that 11 days what that fish did. I mean, did it straight line it down to Hickory Ridge? Highly doubtful. So who knows how many miles that fish literally swam in that period of time, right? Wow. So just, you know, crazy. Why? Only the fish knows why. We had a three pound fish. This was the only fish caught that we know about caught by a tournament angler and moved out of the study area. Hold on one second, Todd. So that's 14 minutes. Let's take a break there. That'll be video two. We'll come right back. We'll start in on video three with our three pound tournament call fish because I think that'll be really interesting for most of us. So guys, that's part two. Part three, we'll be right back here in the next couple of days. Todd and I are going to keep talking and we're going to just edit this up as we go.